Oh, don't tell me she's out of this hour. Good Lord, it's 12 o'clock. It's at midnight or noon. It must be noon. I mean, I've slept almost 24 hours. I've lost a full day, but who cares? I deserve it after everything I've been through. Aha, help is on the way, even if it is cold. From Geraldine, dear Raven, I'm due at the station this morning for a meeting at 10. Hope you had a good rest. Call me when you wake up. Also, I received a call from Ian Devereaux this morning and... Hello. Morning. Who is this? Sky Whitney. Oh. Say, did I uh, wake you up? You sound a bit groggy. Oh, you don't sound so good yourself. What do you want? Now, come on. Don't get lofty with me, Raven. I called to see how you were doing after your ordeal the last few days. I've been concerned about you. Yeah, I bet you have. Just like yesterday, when the only reason you came over here was for that diary. Is that what you want today? Come on, Raven. You've got me all wrong. That's not... No, no, no. I've got you all right. Just a minute. Somebody's at the door. Good morning. I mean, good afternoon. I mean, come in. Miss Alexander, I can see that I've surprised you. I am sorry. That's all right. I didn't realize I'd be intruding. You see, I spoke to Mrs. Saxon this morning, mentioning I might be dropping by. Apparently, she forgot to tell you. Uh, uh, no, no, she, she left a snow, but then the phone rang, and then you came and... Um, just a minute. Hello, I'm so sorry, but uh, I can't talk anymore. Mr. Devereaux has come. Bye-bye. David, I'll send out for coffee if you'd like some. Oh, no thanks, Mike. I've had more than my share this morning. Hasn't done a thing to clear my head, either. Afraid the only thing that's going to do that is if we get our hands on George Foley and his accomplice. Derek is doing everything possible. In fact, we're uh, giving that composite sketch of Foley the widest distribution we can. Good. That could help a lot. David, even if we apprehend them, we have no tangible evidence of espionage activity in their part. Well, I'm sure once we get our hands on them, the connections will be there. Right now, all we can charge them with is trespassing, abduction, and perhaps some other civil charge. It's what they're after that concerns me, anyway. Disturbs you? Disturbs is the word, yes. Trouble is, I can't stick around here forever. Well, if you have to go back to Washington, you can be sure we'll keep on bulldogging it here until we find them. Mike, there are aspects of this case that are more desperate than you can possibly imagine. Look. I know you can't share everything with me. You needn't feel obliged to tell me anything more than's absolutely necessary. I can help keep it moving knowing what I do know now. You have a right to know. And I know your discretion can be trusted. It's just that, well, there's, there's a personal guilt involved on my part, and I've been reluctant to lay it out where I, I have to face it. I'm going to do it anyway. Whichever way you want it is fine with me. I, uh... I was terribly upset by something that happened yesterday, and I couldn't sleep all night thinking about it. Something about the phone book? Yes. Yes, the book, exactly. It just, it, it shocked me terribly because, well, it confirmed my worst suspicions. Why is that so significant? What is this phone book? Is it a code name? Well, no, it's not an official name. It's, it's jargon, really, for what might well be the most important confidential document in the entire country related to national security. <sighs> Mike, it's... it's a complete list of all United States undercover agents throughout the world. What? Oh, good Lord. That's got to be the most privileged, highly classified document around. There are three officials in the entire country who could see that list, and I'm not one of them. But the director of the CEA would have access to it, wouldn't he? Exactly. Exactly. 
And as we know now, at one time, Fowler Wilcox was uh, in direct line for that title. He is thoroughly briefed. He had access to everything. And your fear is, if Wilcox's trusted aide, Jefferson Brown, made a copy of that list... Can you imagine what that would be worth? And can you imagine what will happen if it falls into the wrong hands? If all those people who are working for this country in secret are exposed, it will... Well, it would destroy our whole network of covert operations. The intelligence system would be in shambles. And there is no telling how many lives would be put in jeopardy or lost. That's a terrifying thought. It's unthinkable. So you can see the importance of this and the consequences there are staggering. The phone book. Hm. So that's what George Foley is after. That's why he's chasing the ghost of Jefferson Brown. Ian. I wonder if he really was at her front door. Or if Raven was lying. Yeah, that's just the sort of thing she'd try to do. Try to make me jealous. Try to make me jealous the way she did at that party. And she really is obvious. Oh. But she's so damn female. No, no, Ian must have been there. She knows I could always ask him about it. The question is, what in hell was he doing there? I guess he must have liked playing the role of being a rescuer of a damsel in distress. And I suppose it must have impressed her, too. Yeah, come in. Good morning. Yeah, A couple of letters for you to sign here, if you will. One for Ferguson in New York and Mr. Harris in St. Louis. Is that it? Well, there's nothing more at the moment, although I was wondering if you're still planning on going to WNON today. No, I think that's a bit premature. I'm not going to be going over there since our lawyers haven't come to an agreement with Mrs. Scott's lawyers yet. Well, the, the deal is virtually settled. All you had to do was commit to Mrs. Saxon retaining her position as general manager. Of course you did that. I know what I did, Spencer. What I just said was that I was not going over to the studio today. I thought it was premature. You feeling all right today, Sky? Yeah, I'm fine. You do seem a bit edgy. No, there's nothing wrong, nothing at all. I suppose you did hear about the latest adventures of our Miss Alexander. No, I haven't. Yeah? Huh? Well, it seems she was taken in once again by a group of people who uh, patterned themselves after another group of people, a theater group. That is uh, one performance I can easily forget what happened to Raymond. Well, this time she was arrested by someone who was claiming to be a member of the CEA, I think, whatever that is. She was charged, if you can believe this, with high treason. Treason? Yeah. Well, what was the point of that? I don't know all the details, but I do know that it had something to do with our old friend Jefferson Brown. Brown. How does he keep stirring up trouble from where he is? I don't know. But I seem to have underestimated him. It seemed that he was involved in espionage even when he was in Switzerland. You mean someone thought that Raven might know something about the whole thing? Yeah, I guess so. Well, uh, how is she? Is she all right? Yeah, yeah, she's fine. You know what they say about cats, about having nine lives and that sort of... Uh, Spencer, hold all calls and... That's all. I don't, I don't need you anymore. All right. I'll be in the other room if you need me. Yeah. I, uh, oh, I just dropped an earache. Are you serious, Nora? Well, I, I did overhear you talking to Mr. Whitney about Raven. Mm-hmm. I bet you just couldn't help yourself, could you? I'm very concerned about her. She's had a horrible experience. Is she all right? Didn't you hear Mr. Whitney say she was all right? You should eavesdrop harder next time, Nora. I was not. It's very nice. It's very nice of you to be so considerate about your former employer, Nora. I think about her a lot. You ask me, so does Mr. Whitney. I don't recall anyone asking you, and I'd rather not discuss it. Well, why not? I'm sure you wouldn't agree. After all, there's no one in the world that knows Mr. Whitney the way you do. Oh, come on, Spencer. It's obvious he's intrigued by her. None of this is any of your business, Nora. <laughs> of course you're angry. 
she'd be very unhappy if she were to come back here and be lady of the house. After what you did to her, the first thing she'd do is fire you. You wouldn't like that very much, would you? You hold it right there and don't you move. Here. This clock here is some polish. I want you to start polishing this floor right now. How dare you order me around like that? I am housekeeper here. I am not a cleaning woman. You will do what you are told, and when you are told to do it right this minute. In other words, you'll be walking out that door with your suitcases behind you. Now start polishing, Nora. When we've had it with city life, Lisa and I head for the hills. All she takes is her toothbrush. Rocky, why are you yelling at me, Rocky? Come on, you and Matty Ashton have been my favorite bookmakers, right? Hey, I only owe you a lousy $10,000. What are you screaming about? Look, the federal government owes $300 billion. Nobody's yelling at them, Matty. Now, give me a break. Now, listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. Yes, the Eden thing went wrong, but I'm going to fix that. Don't worry about it. I'll find a little link. I'll fix the fence. You understand? As soon as I'm back in action, I'll send you some money. I won't put it in the mail. I'll bring you cash. Goodbye. Do me a favor. Answer the phone. Whoever it is, I'm not here. I left. I went to oblivion. I'm not coming back. Yeah. Uh, hello? No. No, I'm sorry, but uh, M Mr. Lorimer's not here right now. Yes, I'll, I'll certainly tell him that you called. Yeah, uh, yeah, bye. Telephones. Who needs telephones? Well, what are you standing here for? You like to see a guy going down for the third time? Huh? Hey, what are you, hey. a sadist or something? A sadist. Well, stop giving me English lessons, whatever it is. Do me a favor, get lost. Eddie, I'm standing here because I've been trying to tell you for the past ten minutes. You've got a visitor outside. Well, whoever it is, tell him I'm not here. Get me off the hook, will you? If I see one more guy I owe money to today, I am going to scream. But this isn't a creditor. This is a lawyer. A lawyer? What am I going to do with a lawyer? I need a fairy godmother is what I need. Back at this point, I'll take a fairy godfather. It's Dee Dee Bannister. Troy's sister? She's probably come down to scream at me, too, because her brother's up to his neck in trouble, right? All right, you know what? I'll talk to her. But do me a favor. Get on the intercom. I want you to listen to every word in case I need a witness. Okay? okay? Yeah. Miss Bannister? Thank you. Mr. Lorimer? Hello, Miss Bannister. Uh, <clears throat> nice to see you. Yes, thank you for seeing me. I realize you must be very busy. Yeah, that, that's true. I'm very busy. You want to tell me what this visit's all about? Uh... Well, as you've probably guessed, it has to do with my brother, Troy. Yeah, I figured as much. I was hoping that you could help me in some way, Mr. Lorimer. Very strange turn of events, isn't it? Everything now is Mr. Lorimer and thank you and I'm sorry. I guess when you want something, you can be nice and polite, huh, sweetheart? If I could see some way that would help my brother, I would beg, Mr. Lorimer. Hey, what can I do for your brother? I had nothing to do with it. When he shot that cop, that was his business. Well, you may be called as a witness at his trial. And what you have to say in court may have an effect on the way the jury feels about him. Hold it right there, lady. Let me tell you something. I hired your brother to act as security for my gallery, you understand? I had nothing to do with his shooting that Loomis guy. That was his own idea. Now, I really wish I could help you. But as you can see, there's nothing I can do. Look, I'm very busy. I gotta get back to work. Thanks for stopping by. And besides, I got my own problems. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Lorimer. He's not here. He's, he's gone for a week. Here, yeah, goodbye. You know, that raven just has a knack for dancing herself into hot water time and time again. Yeah. And out again. I have never seen anything like it. I guess that's what you call a uh, charmed life. Well, you know what they say about drunks and sleepwalkers. I think the same rule applies to raven. <laughs> I guess so. Here you go, guys. Ham and cheese. Thank you. And sardines and mayonnaise. Great. Thank you. <laughs> well, go ahead. What did the chief tell you? Just that um, she was held for a couple of days by this guy Foley and some woman accomplice. They were trying to get some information out of her, but didn't because she didn't know anything. Really? What kind of information? It was about her husband. 
Evidently, the late and unlamented Mr. Brown was involved in some hanky-panky in Switzerland even before he decided to take his friend Sky Whitney's face. Hmm. What do you feel about that? Well, I wasn't too happy to hear about it. Actually, it seemed sort of like an instant replay, you know, an unhappy reminder of that smiley Wilson caper, which is something that I would just as soon forget. Well, I certainly understand that. Well, what's the matter? Aren't you going to eat your uh, sardine sandwich? I don't know, Calvin. Somehow my mind just isn't into food right now. Well, if you're spending all this time trying to figure out that, uh, that Foley business, forget it. First of all, it's not your assignment. And secondly, the, uh, big boys from the feds are already working on it. Calvin, I assigned myself to this case about three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I know, because of what happened to your father. Look, it's all tied together. I mean, Foley and the Jefferson Brown connection. Look, you know I had a talk with that bigwig from the CEA, David Cameron. Yeah, you mentioned it. What happened? Well, it was tough on both of us. I mean, he knew how I felt about him because he didn't give my father a fair shake and because he gave Jefferson Brown a security clearance, which he definitely did not deserve. So what do you have to say for himself? Well, they said something that made me sick. And now I've got this nagging ache that I can't get rid of. Tyler, what Cameron tell you? Well, Calvin, he told me that... Well, I guess things just didn't happen the way I imagined. You see those federal agents, they found the documents. Only they found them in my father's house. What? Yeah, I guess that's why they let Jefferson Brown go and let him leave the country. Oh. Well, that's a hell of a thing for him to decide to come and tell you after all this time. Tyler, there must have been some reason, some, some, some illness. Some no, 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 it was nothing like that. I still believe in my father's innocence. I mean, I'm convinced that Jefferson Brown framed him somehow. I just don't know why he did it. But I know that it happened that way. Oh, Rip, the tea came. I'm sorry I took so long. I just uh, wanted to freshen up a little. It was well worth the wait. You look positively radiant. Thank you. I was just admiring your portrait. It's very good. But nothing compared to the original. Why, thank you again. You're a very special lady. <laughs> oh, nice. Raven, I hope it's not being familiar to call you by your first name. Since you did spend the night in my bed, I think we should be on a first name basis. Are you trying to make me blush, sir? I've been thinking about it all night. I'm so intrigued by the whole situation. Meeting you under such bizarre circumstances. Yes, it was awful. But it ended so wonderfully. Well, I prefer to think of it as a beginning. So do I. Anyway, um, tell me about you and Skylar. When you met each other, it was like you were two long-lost brothers. Our families were very close at one stage. Skylar and I have been friends for years. As kids, we were inseparable. Then we were educated in different countries. I went to England, he went to Switzerland. After that, we went in different directions and somehow lost track of each other. You know, that's so sad. The two people could be so close and then lose track. And I think you should become friends again. And as a matter of fact, I know Sky Whitney so well that I'm going to help. aware of how infuriating you are. We could always quit and be rid of you. Nora? Come in here, please. Yes, sir. Could you send Spencer in? I'm right here, Skylar. Oh. Uh, Nora, give me a tray of something. I'm starved, would you please? Of course. I'll get you for this. Spencer, is there an undercurrent of something going on here today, or is that my imagination? What do you mean, Skylar? Well, never mind. It's just that I like compatibility in a household staff. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I understand. I plan to keep it that way. Good. I'll get it. Never mind. Hello? Skylar! It's Ian. Well, hello, Ian. How great to hear from you. How are you? Couldn't be better. Great. Well, you know, I... It was really wonderful seeing you again yesterday. I bet I surprised the pants off you showing up on your doorstep like that, didn't I? 
You certainly did, and I couldn't have been more delighted. How about having dinner with me tonight? Great, where when? Oh, let's say the coach house at eight. Okay, I'll be there. I'll see you there. Oh, just a minute. Yeah. Um, no, that's okay. I'll see you later. Bye. I'm sorry, I just didn't want you to tell him that it's going to be for the three of us. I would like to make it a lovely surprise. Right. 